Come in, Ocean Sailor. Come in, Ocean Sailor. The Ocean Sailor Podcast. Brought to you by Ocean Sailor Magazine and Kraken Yachts. Welcome to Ocean Sailor Podcast, episode 10. With me, Dick Durham in the UK and Dick Beaumont, of course, freshly back to the UK uh, from uh, the Eastern Mediterranean. We apologies. We apologise to all of you for um, this podcast being a little later than usual. But Dick's been involved with the exciting launch of a first Kraken, actually, in to be launched in Turkey, a K fifty. And Dick, I think you're very happy with what you've seen, are you not? Yeah, I, yeah, Dick. Thanks. Hello, everybody. Um, I was. Uh, yeah, it went amazingly well. We had. Uh, we do as part of the uh, sea trials a four day, five hundred mile uh, trip. Um, just to make sure everything is absolutely tested. You don't find out everything just going twice around the bay like, you know, most boats are tested. So, um, yeah, and in that, it went extremely well. Um, We had a a small snag with the uh, water maker, but that was soon ironed out, and now she's absolutely going brilliantly. Mm -hmm. But the speed (laughs) you just said and how she sails was, to be honest, uh, frankly astonishing. I mean... This boat, I would expect a 50-footer to be making seven, seven and a half at a push, but she makes nine, and actually we hit 12 uh, on one particular uh, run, and uh, she, we averaged uh, 9.08 knots over an eight-hour sail. It's pretty, just, uh, well, pretty, it's un- pretty amazing. It's really. unheard of, Dick. Um, it's exceptional. Have you tested the instruments? Make sure they're reading properly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have. Oh, actually, you know, obviously on the old GPS, the G, you know, the ground speed on the GPS uh, no, can't really uh, be that, screwed fails, around eh? with. And everybody was checking their phones, actually, right. oh, well. to make sure there wasn't some glitch there. Well, you so had a few sailing good. journalists but, on board, uh, I suppose, so they were sort of hauling you over the coast. Uh, no, we had, uh, the, we had the guys on from Sailing Millennial Falcon, right. Adam and Kiara, and uh, they, I'd invited them over um, because they expressed an interest in their particular focuses on blue water yachts so you know i invited them over and i were i were pretty swept away as we were but um yeah anyway all good all good all very very good so in so in four days dick uh one thing i hope you didn't suffer from in the uh sea of mamara uh, was seasickness which of course is what we're coming on to in a minute is it not yeah it is yeah i mean uh that was very interesting um the last session we did with michelle segras um it's it's proved I, I think her point is that there's no silver bullet no. yeah, doesn't it? but you know i mean there's a lot you can do to mitigate it and reduce yeah, it yeah. Don't you, that's you her can point, use a silver it, bucket <laughs> yeah excellent silver <laughs> bucket rather than a silver <laughs> bullet yeah <laughs> you know i'm not so i'm not so sure that what i'm going to do before a voyage with uh, lot, uh with green hall sailors is uh, rush out and buy five ki- kilos of King Edward, <laughs> though, I must say. You know, I'm not, I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not, I don't really buy no, too no, much into uh, the, the potato held perhaps, in their perhaps. hand. But there's a lot of good stuff in there, wasn't well, there, Dick? You know yes, what I mean? There was. I mean, the thing is, she, she does say that if she goes into the use of medication and the use of sort of training yourself as well with distraction, the art of distraction. She talks about the fear mm. factor, which I thought was quite interesting. A lot of it is down to anxiety, I guess, illness, isn't it, or feeling of, being unwell but but essentially there is perhaps anxiety yes, exactly. actually eh? perhaps anxiety. That's right. but there yeah. is no cure that's it no what's interesting is uh, of course we've also between uh, the first uh, the, between part one uh, and now we've <laughs> we've done this poll and the answers back are that roughly 90 percent of people have said that, that they've had seasickness um and 10 percent say they haven't no. So the ten percent are liars, then, according to Michelle. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I don't buy into that either. No, I don't. And bless, bless you, Michelle. No, but because I've got some very good mates that can literally kind of set, seem to stand upside down in the bottom of the bilge first day out with a glass of rum in one hand while they try and you know uh, sort out diesel spin. <laughs> so you know there, there, it's about it's about the worst test well, you can right. have. I there, suppose that makes them in, in that poll test that makes them bipolar. Oh, Dick, we can't stop this. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, I mean, so that, that's very good. I mean, the strong point that I'd like to get across uh, to the listeners is that 
whilst it is an extremely debilitating um, condition, seasickness, uh, I, in my experience, you know, I don't know really, in all my years of Santa, I've never met anybody that didn't get over it in three days. So, you know, some people then re-get not so clever again if it gets really lumpy, uh, or you get this dreadful thing that I <laughs> don't like myself, which is a corkscrew, I call it a corkscrew C, yeah. where C comes in, the, the wave train's come in from two different directions. But, you know, as I said, everybody that I've ever met has got over it in three yeah. days. How about you? No, I, I, I'm sure that's the case, Dick. And certainly in my experience, I mean, with even with deep sea fishermen, of which I've done a couple of trips with, they were all seasick yeah, you. Uh, with the first day or two. They just took it as read that that's what was going to happen to them. Then they got over it and they weren't. But every trip, they were seasick at the beginning, at the outset. Yeah. But you mentioned motion there, and of course that's very important, isn't it? I mean, oddly enough, I know people who will go on a cross-channel ferry and feel queasy just going across to Calais and say to me, I'd rather be in your boat making this crossing, jerking about. Uh, and I, I guess, you know, uh, it depends on, obviously, the uh, le- uh, waterline length of a boat and also her, her beam as to how much, um, how queasy the motion can be. Yeah, Dick, I, I agree with you. I, motion uh, and, and having a boat with a steady motion, I think absolutely, definitely... Uh, reduces the propensity for people to get yeah. seasick. You know, it's what we found on Krakens. The, the boats are so steady that, uh, you know, they're not bouncing around no, or no. Um, sort of seesawing sure. motion is pretty dreadful. And I also think, actually, you know, <laughs> people will say, oh, that's another sales pitch. But <laughs> actually, I think a centre cockpit helps as well because you're in yeah, the, the position in the boat most of the time where the, uh, the, the motion is reduced. Yeah. But I guess, you know, enough of all that because we got, we got, that was a great one we had and we got Michelle waiting in the wings well, to indeed. come in now. And so, without more ado, let's go across to Michelle. Yeah, exactly. Let's bring right. her in. Have you experienced skippers that have no empathy at all for seasickness and have not suffered it before? Have you come across that? Um, I have not experienced that, thank goodness. And um, and all of my sailing mentors or anyone I've ever gone to for help with sailing or sailing advice have always told me, you know, if you get seasick, it's okay. It's, there's nothing to be ashamed mm. of. Uh, I know there are some out there who uh, would not be so kind. In no, I've, I've suffered. I suffered one quite many, many yeah, years. I ago. can't imagine that. If you if you don't have the support of your captain and crew. I can't imagine that. He wasn't having it. Oh. He wasn't having it. He, the whole thing is psychological. You just got to pull yourself together and get on with the job and bam, you'll be fine. Of course, it's not true at all. And I, I, I think it can create a lot of misery in, in people. And, and it's not what you want in a skipper. You want a skipper that uh, understands the vagaries of the crew and their various conditions, I think. Agreed. And, you know, anxiety really adds to it, too anxiety yeah. and fear and if you're anxious about disappointing your captain or disappointing your crew this can make it worse mm. you, you the, oh. relaxing and trying to find a way to relax and settle in and not be anxious about it also really does help i promise you and i, I think this is uh it's really sad that that you experience this that, that would be a miserable situation to be in and i would say that uh When we talk about it being psychological, I do think there's some psychological elements and I think there's some psychological cures. But anyone who has been seasick and has experienced this violent, forceful kind of sickness (laughs) that we're talking about, this isn't just a polite little, oh, I'm going to throw up over the, the rail. It takes your whole body. I describe it as feeling like you know, you're you're jerked up off your feet from the waist by the hook of a crane. I mean, that's what it feels like. It takes your whole body. The the retching is so violent, <laughs> and so you they, you have to you have to know that there is a physical element to this. It's not just psychological. Anybody who's been seasick like this, <laughs> Michelle, I, Michelle, I want to I want to return you to I want to return you to a, a subject that. Um, I, is in your book, I think, which is okay. the consideration of the type of foods you're eating 
and yes. and that they travel equally well in each direction. Would you like to expand <laughs> so on that true. one for us a bit? I would, I would love to because this is really, to me, for me, the most important tip I could ever share. So if you know that you're going to be seasick, as, as I generally know, I just if I have accepted, I know. And so you have to consider the reverse taste of food. And this is really <laughs> important because if, if you know it's going to come back up, then you should eat food that tastes okay coming back up. Because there's nothing like throwing up uh, tuna or yogurt that has, you know, gone stale in your tummy or um, alcohol is really bad coming back up. Um, but things like an apple, you know, tastes okay. You know, it tastes so bad coming back up. A banana. I know a lot of people don't like to have bananas on board, but a banana it is a good thing, I think, to, to take if you can get past that superstition. Um, the banana you may doesn't... have something. You may have something here because during <laughs> the start of a fast net race, uh, and I don't like racing, and I won't ever do it again. But I, I wanted to do a fast net because I knew I wouldn't like it, and I wanted to write about it. Anyway, I was <laughs> just across the, the list. Yeah, yeah I, I, I was a, one of the crew anyway, and we were leaving the zone. It was quite fresh, about a 30, 30 knots on the nose, but we hadn't even got out of the zone. Uh, and there was one guy. In fact, he was German. Uh, this chap, and he was giving it, he hadn't been to ever sailing before, and he was shouting, oh, great, great, bring, big sea, bring, big winds. <laughs> and we all thought, oh, shut up. But anyway, he was stuck up on the <laughs> on the bow ahead of me. And uh, suddenly we'd gone through a warm patch of water, and I thought, well, that's weird. There must be an off, you know, maybe a shallow patch or perhaps a drainage thing coming off because it's sort of showering water all the time. So I was sort of brushing the water off. And as I licked my lips to get rid oh. of the salt, I found a piece of ham on my lips, <laughs> which, <laughs> which, which was which was quite strange because I'd only had a che- I'd only no I'd only had a cheese sandwich. <laughs> Maybe our it wasn't German, ham. No, our German friend had thrown up and had gone over all of us. Oh no, he that's was disgusting. That so is he was really. Sent, he was sent. He was sent below. <laughs> that's really foul. I'm about to get yeah. seasick right oh, now. God, Just true. thinking about that. <laughs> But ham tasted all right coming back up, I can assure you. <laughs> Although it wasn't, didn't go down me in the first place, it went down somebody else. <laughs> we may have gotten off track what? here. <laughs> <laughs> please, please. Stop. The one thing that, that I've experienced and um, I've planned for, deliberately so, on crossings, is when I've got new crew in particular. Um, and I think it's. And I've come unstuck because people have done this, the standard thing. You've told them you're going to sail, do a 10-day right. sail, whatever. So they plan a flight out right. on the, the afternoon of the 10th day, which puts you tremendously under pressure to leave on time. And I think that's a really key issue. I would like to say that the planning so that you leave in as stable conditions for the first two or three days, if that means no wind, and just motoring for two, for a couple of three days to let everybody get their sea legs. I, I think that's a massive. That is help. extraordinary advice. I think it's extraordinary advice. It really is. It makes a difference. You know, they may be a little bit queasy. They may be a bit queasy. Uh, 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 but if it's not violent, you know, if you go out there straight into a four, six, seven, or eight, then you know you're just going to cut everybody off at the knees. And the other thing that I generally do although i don't feel as i've already said any more a problem in the galley but what i do is i generally will do two or three days um food and stick it in the freezer so all it's got to have is a, a microwave if you don't do that and everybody is feeling rough the problem that you then have is that the people haven't got a good warm meal inside them and this comes back to, I think, what you were saying, mm-hmm. that, you know, all right, okay, no, nobody's going to eat when they're feeling seasick. But when they start to feel a little bit better, if they can get a good meal inside them, I think that will, uh, will cut the mustard. Do not do you think so? Or I do agree. It, I will say this, as, as much as I fought through seasickness and had these battles and had to get out on the deck and do, you know, sailing tasks and actually sail the boat and uh, reef the sails and do other things while I'm feeling so awful. I've never been able to cook while I'm seasick. 
it's just for me physically impossible. And so mm. it's such great advice. And, and it's also dangerous when you think about it, if you're feeling so bad and you're down below trying to cook on the gas stove, uh, boil water or something. I mean, it's, it, it could be really, it could be really a safety issue. Um, mm. But it's also just impossible because then the smells and the, you know, all this adds to the seasickness. So for me, it's that's perfect advice. And even just to put some snacks and drinks yeah. and ginger tea and things like that, fix some ginger tea in a thermos that'll uh, keep it nice and hot. So you don't have to go down and boil water and make tea when you feel the seasickness. You have it ready and you have it yeah. in the cockpit. So you stay out in the fresh air. You don't have to go down below and get anything. You have crackers, you have apple, you have your potato, you know, of course. You have some things there, so Mm. you don't have to go. So you're actually planning, expecting it, aren't you? Yeah, I have like a seasick station. (laughs) You know, a station, a little um, uh, container that had all this stuff in it, and it was Velcro to, you know, the uh, place in the cockpit, and so it couldn't move around, and it had drinks and uh, chips and saltines and just things that things that you can eat some fruit and ginger items and the other trick that I love is uh, that really works for me is peppermint even more so than ginger the peppermint kind of the menthol like if you just suck on a piece of uh, peppermint candy this really helps me and another trick is okay. I would just I would take like just a dab of mint flavored toothpaste and just put it on my tongue and kind of roll it around in my mouth. And not mm. only not only does this help, you know, it gives this the the menthol kind of clears you up a little bit, but right. it also um freshens your breath a little bit. If you've if you've been seasick, there's nothing like having that taste in your mouth. I mean, it's just the worst. Mm. And especially if you've already eliminated everything that was in your belly, which I've done many times, and you're still We're, throwing up, um, no, and not no. much is coming out. Um no. and 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 I'm, I don't want to get graphic or I guess we're already graphic. We're talking about seasickness, but, um, Might you know, well. you know, sometimes the stomach acid starts to come up and little pieces yeah. of your stomach lining. I mean, this is when, <laughs> when you were talking about the, now ham, you're talking. when you were talking about the ham <laughs> on your mouth, this is kind of what came to my mind. This is what I yeah. thought maybe that was, but this can happen. I mean, just boiling stomach acid sizzling on the deck, you know, coming out of your tummy. So Incredible. to get, get and there's there's nothing that tastes worse than that. Nothing. Me, no, it, Michelle, it Michelle, it. Michelle, I want to know. <laughs> you, you've studied this whole thing. I want to know why it is that, despite you eating a whole variety of foods, why is it every time you are actually seasick, there's always carrots and peas in it? I, I mean. <laughs> Uh, how is that I think possible? This is, this is the the greatest unsolved mystery in the history of the universe, right? I mean, I think this is true for anybody. Maybe my guess is that maybe that just doesn't digest as quickly. I don't know, but uh, but you're right. <laughs> you're right. That does well, seem to happen. You know, I, I tell you what, it's been enlightening this discussion, and and you know, as I said, throughout my life, I've suffered terribly and don't suffer at all now. Um, yeah. And I certainly feel there's a relationship between the incidence of, of uh, seasickness and the regularity that you go to see. I, I think mm-hmm. there's a strong relationship. No question. And my strong suggestion is go sailing all the time. <laughs> we can't always do that, though, can we? Dick's just come back from a, a little foray, but uh, yeah. and I'm off on one short. Um, it, it's been very interesting. And I think as we've dug into it and we've undone it, We've, you know, when uh, when Tristan, our creative director, first mentioned uh, about doing a podcast with you, we were kind of thinking, oh, great, well, here's this lady, Michelle, and she's got the cure, and she's going to say, well, all you do is <laughs> this. But it's obviously, it's not as simple as that, but it is possible to overcome it. I, I do I think, so. but I, I do think that. 95% of people, and maybe more than that, are over seasickness in three days. I'll, I'll give you another little tip of mine, which I practice regularly, is I will try and leave harbour or marina uh, on, a, uh, on a big trip in the late evening, mm-hmm. and then I'll just go a short way up the coast and I'll drop anchor. Uh, for the night in a bay where there 
you know, it's almost still, but not quite still. Mm -hmm. And everybody goes to sleep. Everybody gets a good night's sleep with a little bit emotional. And I'm quite convinced that helps to set the body right or the mind and eyesight balance right. And then in the morning we get up, we've got a full day sailing in light, and then right. off we go. And we've had, we've had, you know, overnight a sleep, because I do think when you're unconscious sleeping, I do think that helps reset the balance a little bit. Do you think there's any possibility of that? I think that's brilliant advice. It makes complete sense. And I'm one of those that uh, I tend to be seasick for about three days, mm. and then I'm fine. And uh, I think people, different people have different tolerances. Now, during those three days, it's miserable. And I like this idea of kind of eliminating that first day. <laughs> so then maybe it's only two days or maybe it's not quite so bad. I think that's brilliant advice. But I think different people have different tolerances. Uh, I talked mm. to one sailor who said that, that his tolerance was when the waves got to three meters. Anything yeah. less than three meters, he never got seasick. No matter, he could be in a squall or a storm and it could be in very heavy, awful conditions. But if, as long as the waves weren't three meters, and this may have been also psychological for him. Interesting. But, but once the waves hit three meters, he gets seasick and right. or he starts to feel queasy. And so I think everyone has kind of their tolerance level that they need to be aware of. For me, it's three mm. days. After three days of being violently ill three days and nights, then I can read a book in the mm. cabin. I can clean. I can cook. I can do, I can go mm. down to the engine room. I can do just about anything and go out on the bow, mess with the sails. I can do anything. And, and I think you do, it does take some time to get your sea legs, sea legs. Yeah. And so that's good advice to kind of get a head start. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, I mean, here, here's the thing. I, I agree with you. I think some people, uh, most people uh, take, you know, three days to get completely out of it. Some take 72 hours. Mm. <laughs> and right. I think that nonetheless, all of us are going to, especially those that haven't been to sea, especially mm -hmm. those. Mm -hmm. And you are simply asking for trouble, as I did, I told you on my course way back when, uh, you are asking for trouble if you're going to go, oh, well, I'll tell you what, it's blowing, it's blowing 30, 40 knots. Yeah, we're going. We're tough guys. Poof, off we go. Yeah. You can reckon yeah. everybody's going to be uh, in trouble with that. And if, you're, if you're, they're not, you're bloody lucky it's right. not good seamanship. I think what's, good what's seamanship the is to accept it and plan for it. Yeah. What's the, what's, yeah. can it hurt to wait one more day and just let the conditions calm a little bit? It doesn't mean you're less of a man or less of a woman or less of a sailor. It just means you're smart. Yeah, I and think so. you're taking precautions that That's every sailor case. should yeah. take. Every t sailor should be a little bit conservative about, about when they Without sail. question. You know, yeah, it's important. It's they critical. They should be cautious. Yeah. They should be cautious. I don't like people that aren't cautious. Right. Um, I like to see caution there. Uh, you know, tempered with adventure, of course. But, uh, sure. I think but, it's just I mean, smart. But, it's being yeah, smart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's fair enough. I mean, we uh, getting another example of, of um, when you are sick and you are then therefore letting down the whole team. Right. This wasn't quite – I'm not having a, a chip at you, Michelle. I'm not because I, you explained that, that you were both ill and, you know, you accepted it. That's fair enough. Um, you're on your own terms together. This was a brigantine, um, a 55-foot brigantine, uh, 10 of us on board crossing the Bay of Biscay in November. Uh, and at night, this was a, a night passage about, we were, we were off Belle Isle and uh, it was a storm 10. It's the worst weather I've ever been yeah. in. But I was very young then and I just thought, well, I suppose that's what happens. And I, was, I went aloft to put a gasket around the, the, this sail that wasn't being used. I could see it was blowing adrift. And while I was aloft, the whole vessel was underwater. Just the two masts sticking out of the water, that's how bad it was. We came down and then the skipper said, um, Dick, can you get everyone in life jackets? I said, yeah, okay, get everyone in life jackets. The, the, <laughs> the only one I couldn't find was the cook, Iris, who I hadn't seen since we'd left port in the handball because she was seasick oh. and in her stateroom. Uh, and so her husband, who was the mate, because they were both being paid, not only did he stand his watch as mate, but he did the cooking as well. Aww. And 
and of course he didn't do either very well. He was too tired to stand his watch. And when he was cooking, yeah. there's big pot boiling away, and it was in the seventies, so it was a hippie thing was all going on. And I yeah. saw him shredding bacon into this pot, and I said, "Charlie," I said, "Most of those people up there are vegetarian." He said, "Oh, that'll dissolve." <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so that was another cause of seasickness. Although I wasn't, I wasn't seasick. But uh, anyway, there you go. Yeah, there's so many stories that you can learn from and you can, take yeah. tips from for sure. Yeah, uh, and don't do not. And here's the key, isn't it? Here's the key. Don't even attempt to deny, it, to deny it, as you have said, and you yeah. have taken on board, okay, I know I'm going to be seasick. Well, okay, wear it, take it on board, plan for it, yeah. and uh, mitigate it as much as you can. I think it's a, there's a lot, lot to be understood. Yeah. You also have to remember, that, like for someone like me who's been seasick so many times, I also know there's, there's the other side, and I can get to it. So, for example, on a long passage, a 10-day passage or something like that, I know that uh, somewhere along day three or four, I'm going to start feeling better. So I know that there's an end in sight. And I think this helps, too, sometimes to get you through it. If, if you've been through it and gotten through it and gotten to the other side where yeah. you can actually enjoy the sailing, then you know that's there. One thing I was going to ask you about, Michelle, I mentioned this to Dick as well earlier on. I don't know if you've ever come across this phenomenon or this gadget but when I was on Yachting Monthly, um, we tried all this kit out all the time. <laughs> One bit of kit was sent in was a pair of spectacles that were full of water. <laughs> have you heard of this? I've but, heard of it. I, that is one thing I have not tried. Right, okay. I, I've tried the wristbands well, we tried and the C-bands. And, and so how was it? Did it work? Rubbish. <laughs> so that not to do. <laughs> So, Dick, hang on, hang on, because you did, Dick, you did tell me about this. I just So these are glasses <laughs> with some water like in a reservoir in, is that right? Yeah, that's it. This sounds like something off a Benny Hill sketch. This is just well, it, it does. does. It's I mean, can't it be does. true. The, the horizon is supposed to go with you, you see. Ah, so oh, I see. Okay. Get it? That's, the, the water. that's the logic yeah. behind it. To water me, I just, I mean, if it worked, I would wear them. And I would wear yeah. them without any reservation whatsoever. But uh, Dick said it might work if, we, if it had beer in them. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, There's yeah. always a, a way to... Uh, Try it. I mean, yeah. it, I'll say this, that if you do suffer from seasickness, just try something else. If if what you're doing is not working, try something else. I mean, my book has 100 tips. Yeah. You, you know, you could sell your whole life and may not have to use all of those. But um, just try something different because maybe something different works and then you know that will help you. Have, have you had any feedback, Michelle, from the book, from people who said, I've tried this and it works? Thank you. Um, Absolutely, I have. I've gotten some really good positive feedback from a lot of people who um, who have said, you know, I always a lot of people think that the only cure for seasickness is to sit under an apple tree. That's an old saying, right? But um, a lot of people have said like some of the psychological things, just thinking through, through, distracting your brain, coming up with a task that you can do that makes you think of something other than how you feel. You know, these right. are some of the things a lot of people have told me that they're now. Uh, traveling with potatoes so you know it uh, when you when you experience it you will try what one, one can i give you a suggestion have you considered publishing um an edition with plastic pages well that's such a good so, idea I, I just don't know does that you're, exist you're attempting can you make... to re read them while you're being sick you can <laughs> just simply wipe them off instead of Mind you, that's right, a, perhaps that's you'll sell more editions idea. if you, if you, <laughs> you, you just it. You're so brilliant. You have, you're the ideas guy. I could see that. <laughs> <laughs> and presumably, Michelle, you want to hear from readers about their own tips. Uh, the absolutely. Edition. Oh, I would love that. I mean, yeah. again, I'll take any tip I can get. And okay. I think most people who suffer from seasickness will. Yeah, we, we, and, get, we, we get a lot of feedback on uh, Ocean Sailor or magazine uh, um or you know and we and we ask for that feedback from people yes yeah and so let's let's hope we we get some real good feedback we'll certainly ask it it's been an intriguing yeah. discussion i've very much enjoyed one thing it. i've got one thing i've got to ask you michelle i notice in your book uh, there's a picture of you with beagles. That's dogs. right, and they're running they're around nice on the floor dogs. down here. With me. You might have noticed the <laughs> the thing mess moving around a little bit. They're they're down here. I give them before a podcast. I give them a nice long walk and wear them out <laughs> so they sleep right here Fair next enough. to me. So, because of course they 
they will bark and carry on if they hear right. any anything. So I keep them yes. here with me when I do a podcast. So presumably you don't take them to sea. They're not. I do take them recommend. to sea. Oh, you do take them. I do. And my two beagles, their names are Captain Jack and Scout. And they have been sailing since they were four months old. And in fact, I've never been sailing without them. Oh, okay. uh, I, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I've never been sailing without them since I've had them. They're, right. um, they're only four years old. So, but since they were four months old, they have always sailed with me, whether, um, uh, and they were on this long voyage. They were in the Bay of Biscay. They were across, going across the land, the uh, Atlantic. They were uh, great shipmates and great dogs. And, and I also have another book that's called How to Sail with Dogs. And it also has a hundred tips, a hundred tips for a pet friendly <laughs> voyage. That's kind of my theme on my books. Okay. I thought, I thought, you, I thought you were perhaps heading for a second edition, curing seasickness in your pet at sea. I thought that. Uh, <laughs> was, I mean, and I will say this: that uh, animals do get seasick. Uh, do they? I, I, th- I think they're less prone to it than humans, right. partly because they have this low center of gravity. This is just this is my theory. They have this low center of gravity, and you can see them kind of adjusting themselves <laughs> to the motion of the boat but but they do you could tell sometimes they didn't feel well and you could tell they weren't quite right and of course there were many times when they were scared uh, you could definitely tell that they were uh they had some anxiety oh, so right. if you do travel with pets you do want to kind of just be aware of that but i think they handled it better than i did i'll say that right. they handled the seasickness better they're great sailors of course they've been sailing all their lives so uh they're, they're but they didn't help. help they didn't help you with your seasickness you couldn't concentrate on your little pets and think i mean they were good to- cuddlers they would always try to take care of me you know they they were whenever i'm not feeling well they're such good companions dogs are so loyal and so sweet that they can tell when you don't feel well and of course right. they're a great company on a night shift too so they're not great conversationalists, but they, they listen <laughs> to everything you <Yeah>. say. <laughs> they never interrupt. They let you talk as much as you yeah. want. They're great company. Be- <laughs> They're great company on a sailboat, especially with just a two-person crew. You're up all mm. night. But on, on a serious point, though, I mean, they didn't help your seasickness to fight it off. They, they didn't help. Um, I'm not sure how they would but help. What do, I mean, mean, you know, you, do you mean because Michelle then had to attend to the dog's re- oh, the pet's yeah. requirements. Is that what yeah, you mean? So- no, I, I, I meant more as a distraction. Mm. Yeah, know, I think take, sometimes. Put your mind onto something else. Yeah, sometimes, yes, because they require care. And if they need to be mm-hmm. fed or something, then it doesn't matter how bad you feel, you need to take care of them because they can't take care of themselves. So obviously, right. yes, sometimes they are a distraction. But I think more so just kind of a comfort, kind of like a, a comfort blanket or something they right. you know they're right there enough. to just kind of make you feel like hey we still love you even though you, oh, nice. you're not yeah, uh okay. feeling too good right now so <laughs> no, uh even though you're throwing <laughs> up over them you know? <laughs> and they certainly yeah exactly so uh, yeah. well look it's yeah. been absolutely intriguing and uh i think we've covered uh a lot more than perhaps dick or i ever gave thought or consideration of and yeah. it's drawn out some great no, ideas and some thoughts um and michelle you know thank you very much indeed and uh, uh and we you. look forward to uh, being able to try and uh, elicit from our uh, readers some some more tips for you to uh you know add into your books but 101 tips that would be awesome quite quite a, a lot and we'll certainly uh, i mean yeah, 101, 101 is better than 100, so I'll take any yeah. tips. And I do want to let your listeners know that the book is available on Amazon exclusively, and the digital version is only 99 cents. So, oh, yeah. and wow, if you have goodness. Kindle, if you have Kindle Unlimited, you can get it for free. So right. um, the paperback less than, version Less than that, a cent a tip. That's fantastic, yeah, eh? Yeah, exactly. What value And for that's a great way to put it. And the the... Paperback version is fourteen ninety nine. These are U.S. currency, by the way, U.S. dollars. So I'm not exactly sure how that translates to British pound or euro or whatever. But it's about you can do the math yourself. But it's not far. Uh, a, do- so, a dollar's not far off a euro at the moment. It's just a bit right. Low. Yeah. So it's a, a very a accessible will book. Be you can south soon anyway, so. yeah. And I think that yeah. So even if you just get one tip and that works for you, it's Absolute. worth the buck, right? Absolutely. So, um, but it's available. The name of the book's How to Battle Seasickness. And if you type that in to Amazon, it, it'll pop right up. 
And right. uh, I would love to hear some feedback from some people if they ha- got some value. And we'll certainly give it. That would be really great. Brilliant. No problem. All right. Well, yeah. thanks very Excellent. much for me. And uh, Yeah. Thank you very much, Michelle. Nice to talk to you. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, guys. Well, I think that was enlightening, Dick, uh, listening to Michelle. And she's, it's good that she's taken the trouble to list all the uh, experience she's, she's had and all the research she's done on mal de mer. Um, we know from it, and I thanks to her, really, that there really isn't a definitive cure for seasickness. We kind of knew that, but it's good that she's done the research into it so that people don't have to waste their time and discover that there is no uh, actual cure. But what... Well- yeah, you know, I mean, I think the the point that you can uh, you can conclude from from that is that whilst there isn't a silver bullet, there's quite a lot that you can do to reduce the effects of seasickness, and that's valuable in itself. Eh? I think. So. I mean, one of one of the things I've learned from it um, from from that is that I will never eat a ham sandwich at sea again. Dick. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> well, nor did well, I. I thought that is. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wearing sandwich. <laughs> no, oh indeed, my God, it did. It was a, it was a reconstituted ham sandwich. Alas, <laughs> trust, trust you to come up with that one. That was perfect. Well, that did make me laugh. Yeah, but it's good that those who who are new to sailing uh, can know that yes, you very likely are going to feel sick. Uh, you might not necessarily be sick, but you know that you will get over it, and that includes yeah, yeah, veteran I mean, mariners that, to neophytes. That that's 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 right, Dick. You know, I mean, I think uh, seasickness is a massive elephant in the room. Yeah. You know, when people trot off to the boat show and start thinking about, you know, um, you know, looking at boats and thinking, oh, yeah, it'd be good for me to get out to sea, which undoubtedly we we would have, of course, massively agree. Um, but I think not many people understand really how much of a negative. Um, seasickness can cause in the first few days but I've, I don't think I've ever known anybody that didn't get over it in three days and that might seem a long time to a lot of people but there's no question is there that the more you go to sea the more you get your sea legs yeah, the, and the less it affects you. I think that is I'm sure you agree. So I would agree with that and certainly that's been my experience. It's also been my experience that I've, I've felt sick even after many, many years of sailing, I've got a bit better. At, at, you know, in other words, I haven't felt sick quite for so quite long or quite so quickly. But nevertheless, I know it's still there. It will, it will happen. But now I know that in my case, I'm not actually going to vomit, uh, and that it will pass. Especially, constant, especially if I'm helming, I like to helm when I'm feeling ill because it it goes away very quickly. So, given a task is my view. Give somebody a task and. They will concentrate on that, and it will pass swiftly. Yeah, and of course, uh, yeah, and of course, Dick uh, Michelle uh, features in uh, the recent uh, Ocean Sailor publication, which is out now. Apologies again, because normally we'd get this podcast out, but before um, Ocean Sailor comes out. But Michelle's done a very nice article of uh, taking pooches to sea. Um, and all the various considerations you've got when you've got your pets, your dogs mostly, I think she covers, um, out uh, out on the boat. But as a lot of people do want to take their uh, their pets with them, and so uh, I think that people would find that very interesting. But uh, mm. yeah, so there's that. We've also um, you did a really great interview um, with uh, the people that I've just had out on uh, White Dragon, a uh, White Dragon, and Sophie Marie, the new fifty. Um, Adam and Chiara, they're a lovely couple, and uh, it tells their story and how they've found their way through to, funnily enough, um, one of, and they've gone back 40 years to do it, which we've been talking about. They've found their way through to the uh, the right sort of boat that you need to yes. go off around the world yes. in. Yes, very interesting, that. Um, well, they were easy to interview, or rather, Adam, I, I, sadly, Chiara wasn't around when I spoke to Adam, but... Uh, I know she's just as bright as he is, but easy, easy to interview Adam because he's an intelligent guy, receptive, good listener, uh, and very experienced for a young chap. Uh, and you know, one's heart is lifted. Uh, let's put it that way: when you come across youth like that that are really showing themselves in the world, good sailors, choosing proper boat, um, and of course, have befriended good old John Cratchmer, 
who uh, understands what yeah, we're well, going yeah, on about. That's right. John, uh, John, who's obviously a friend of mine as well, um, recommended Adam to come and do an interview with me most kindly. Um, and that led on to the interview. That led on to me inviting him out because uh, the owner of uh, the, the new uh, 50, uh, due to a COVID situation in the UK, delayed coming and picking her up. Um, and gave us a bit of chance to take them out Brilliant. and yeah, uh, uh, and sail with them. They, they, I think yeah. they had a great time. One of the things in the magazine, I think in the in the beginning of it, Dick, which I, which fascinates me and it's hugely important, is this: is there's been a sea change in regulation, and that regulation being the Recreational Craft Directive, which I know you've got very strong views about and have campaigned to change. Dick, is that right? Yeah, I've been on this one really for three or four years, and, and uh, particularly uh, is featured in an awful lot of Ocean Sailor comments that I've been making, um, which is that I, felt, I have felt that the RCD category A, as it was Ocean, was very, very um, wrong and misguided, and it undoubtedly led people to believe, of course it would, that if, it's got, if a boat's got a category A Ocean, then uh, they must be okay to take off and cross oceans in it. And, you know, I don't agree with that at all no. because I think it takes a lot more um, to uh, build a boat that is really capable of taking all the rigours of the ocean. And I've been, category, uh, I've been um, campaigning, I should say, for, um, for another qualification above Category A, and they haven't done that. What they have done, and I, um, it's a Pyrrhic victory for sure. It's a real victory, actually, because they've dropped the word ocean. Right. And so now it's only category A, and that means that people have actually got to think about the layup and the build and the specification of their boat and whether the, the, the boat they're thinking of going across an ocean in and whether it is actually suitable. And, and, and yeah. that's what people should be doing. They shouldn't be relying on a certificate from uh, you know, some Euro European quango to tell them that their boat's good to go across the ocean. they actually got to start thinking about it themselves. And perhaps that will mean that when they go, because with Southampton Boat Show's on at the moment, perhaps when they go off to, or very soon, isn't it? Yeah, it is on. When yeah. they go off to Southampton Boat Show, instead of just walking straight up the ramp and looking at uh, how nicely the, you know, the furnishings are, perhaps they'll do the right thing now. People will start doing the right thing and stand down below and look, walk around the bottom of the boat and look at the configuration of the hull, the keel and the rudders and decide whether for themselves, never mind about listening to a salesman, but decide for themselves what, what they think is uh, compatible with the type of sailing they're going to do. The whole point of a, but if you're buying a big ocean going or even a, an offshore going yacht, you want to know it's a proper boat and you're only going to know that by looking underneath. You can't at Southampton. You can at Dusseldorf, of course, and other boat shows where they haul them all out. And, of course, the old uh, original, the old Earl's Court boat show in London, you could. But with Southampton, you can't. But you're, it, it doesn't matter. The point is, you're quite right. You can still go down below, lift the floorboards up, have a look at have a look at the uh, what the keel is like, even from the inside. It's better than nothing, isn't it? Well, it is. You know, I mean, and, and instead of getting all carried away with, you know, how much the boat inside looks like an apartment, um, yes. what, they, what they ought to be doing instead, before anybody signs uh, on the dotted line with a contract, they ought to be making sure they go and actually view uh, the, the under, uh, uh, underwater element of the boat and, and conclude for themselves. You've got to turn, Definitely. you know, you really do have to turn your ears off from some of the nonsense that you get told yes. at a boat show. But we've also got quite a lot of other stuff, haven't we, Dick? I, I think, um, you know, uh, Morgan uh, Grace has done a very good article about the kind of toolbox Excellent you need piece. on a boat. Very useful. Yeah. Again, you see, um, that tailors in very well with, with what we've just been talking about because Morgan goes into what you do need for long, lengthy offshore passage making, the essential tools and kit you should have. And it's hugely valuable. There's no beating about the bush. It's concise. It's clear. There's no waffle. Uh, it's a great, uh, you know, ch check guide, tear out and keep guide. Yeah, I think it's, you know, I mean, if the nut you're trying to undo is a 16 mil and you ain't got a 16 mil spanner, 
um, to say you're you're um, compromised. I was going to use another word, <laughs> but to say you're compromised is compromised a cause for major a understatement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will also tell you that, um, and you might know this, Dick. I've been monitoring the numbers. Ocean Sailor is really getting uh, some fantastic traction now. Um, uh, over the last few weeks, we've had more than 100 people a day on some days uh, subscribing to Ocean Sailor, and the membership is really growing fast. And, and as, as happens, the occasional unusual country appears in the uh, subscriber list. And I think, I think, I'm not quite sure, but I think China... It's the first time we got a China really? subscriber this month. So oh, that's good. And I think we also got Azerbaijan, really? which is, you know, good my goodness, you know, we're getting to everybody. And it, the story's getting out there. And, yeah, that's uh, great. And I'm, I'm very, very gratified yeah. by that. Yeah. So, well, I mean, there we are, Dick. I would say uh, th- th- thanks to all of those people for showing interest because, let's face it, this has been a labour of love producing this magazine. Um, we've all enjoyed it. We know we're singing from the right hymn sheet. We want to spread the news. We're out there proselytizing. And the great thing is, when it gets this kind of response, you know that we're we're kind of barking up the right tree. Yeah, it's very gratifying. Isn't yeah. it? You know, we, when, you, when you keep speaking into the wind and you think, you know, oh, well, <laughs> nobody's listening. No, that's right. It, it can be a bit soul destroying, <laughs> but that's certainly, certainly not. We get a lot of really lovely comments coming yeah. in now. Um, about uh, about the magazine and the specialist subject, obviously of, of blue water sailing, sailing oceans, and and cruising around the world. So I think it's a focus that uh, uh, has has been has, has been you know required for quite some yes. time. And uh, and well done to you and the team for uh, getting that message out there. And and from me also a big thanks to all the subscribers. Yeah, I think that's great. So yeah. Okay. okay, Dickie. Well, so uh, now I've got d- a bit. Dread- oh, I've oh no! Got a bit Here of a it payoff comes. for you, but this this time it's perhaps uh, not quite so facetious because this is a true story. Going back to seasickness, um, did you know that the best way, of course, of getting over sick- seasickness is to be sick and get it out of the way? Well, that was well known in the days of 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 sail, in the old days of working sail, wind jammers. And so, what if anyone felt ill and they were too ill to work? All on the yard arms. Well, there was there was no uh, pity for them. They won't couldn't just go below and sip on a lemonade and hold a potato. Um, they had to be part of the crew, so they had to be be sick and get it over and done with. So the ship's chef would give them a piece of cold pork fat tied onto a string. It was swallowed. Oh, no. The string was pulled oh, yeah. back up, and with it came oh, what no. was making you feel no, ill. Stop! Don't, don't stick. <laughs> stop! Stop! The ham story was bad enough. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious me! A tr- a tr- I think that's story. well yeah. enough said. Yeah. So I'm going to say on that note, I'm going to say goodbye to okay, everyone. Okay, and it's back to the sick bay for, for me. Ta-ta.